I call the Honourable Member David Bennett. Um, it's a great pleasure to speak in the address and reply debate uh, this afternoon. And I'd just like to follow on from uh, my previous speaker, who, who made a very good point about New Zealand agriculture and the strength that New Zealand agriculture displays um, as the main income producer for New Zealand. And following on from that, I think um, not only do we have to be proud of the industries that are involved there and the history of investment and hard work that has gone into making those industries so successful, but we also need to look at the attitude, I think, that those industries display. And it's an attitude um, of hard work, resilience, um, backing themselves, being prepared to take risks, and also looking for challenges and meeting those challenges and accepting them. And those are common fundamental principles um, of any economy where there is success. Uh, if you look at the industrial growth of China, for example, uh, they have a very similar success story. Uh, they have met the challenges of uh, producing products and have done it in a way which has exceeded their competition. And many other countries have failed to keep up with them and paid a dear price economically. And that leads on to the situation that New Zealand faced and most of the Western world faced um, in the last few years. There is a deep recession in Europe. Um, New Zealand was in recession before the rest of the world, thanks to our previous um, Labour administration. And uh, the US is struggling to, to get through the recessionary pressures that are in the world at the moment. And I challenge this parliament to look at it in terms of an east-west divide. Maybe on the eastern side of the political equation or the uh, world, they may have actually um, looked at things in a more long-term and reflectful manner than the West has. And maybe the East has got something that the West needs to learn. And that is that government is not about promises for one election to the next. Government is about building futures. And futures are long-term. And we in the West tend to think an election is a time where we can go buy votes. And you have parties going out there promising all these things promising to people that may be seen as vulnerable that we will change that, promising that their policies are the way to solve the solutions, when maybe, just maybe, we need to take a more eastern perspective and look at it in a long-term vision and actually look at government as a long-term driver and look not at our individual gain per election but our long-term gain over time. And that, I think is the thing that the European countries haven't done. They still face countries that go from election to election, promise to promise, can we buy the votes of those countries, the voters, to stay in power? Something the Labour Party was very good at doing in the, in the previous administration. But the world has moved on. The world needs stable government, the world needs government that is long-term in focus, and the world needs government that has a strong economic base. And those economic fundamentals are something that we, as a country, may not pick up explicitly. But implicitly, the people of our country know that. Because in their day-to-day -day lives, they know that they can lose their job if their company they're working for doesn't perform. They know that the services they will get from government depend on the ability of government to earn revenue and deliver those services. The days of just borrowing to deliver services are gone. The days of a country having to earn its way are the future. And that is a very strong driver that our people understand, but often our politicians don't understand. And the Labour Party didn't understand it at the last election. They didn't understand what people were actually going through on the street. And that is why they didn't connect with the people on the street. And we, as a government and as a country, need to have a much longer term vision. We need to look forward at what our country needs to deliver. And I see the Green members shaking their heads and... and, and, um, and no, 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 in support. 
and they understand and they advocate that in an environmental context. It's a shame they don't do it in an economic context and also um, a social context. But in an economic context, which is one of the major th um, issues that we as a country have to deal with at the moment, environmental as well, but economic as well, um, that requires long-term planning that invests in infrastructure, that makes the right commercial decisions so that New Zealanders can grow their economy grow their businesses, provide those jobs and provide the environment for us as a country to then afford to deliver the social services we all treasure and want to see enhanced. And that is the challenge for this government and for future governments. The challenge of the past has been what can we promise for a three-year cycle? The challenge of the future is to, what we need, is to look forward to what we need to do to deliver a stronger economy and country and environment going forward. And the National Party is committed to long-term growth, we are committed to long-term planning, and we are committed to making sure this country takes advantage of its opportunities. And that is the difference between us and the opposition. The opposition, I, be, I bet, will stand in this room for the next three years looking at short-term things. They will be looking at short-term issues with a short-term vision. We don't have a short-term vision. We have a vision as the right vision in the current economic climate. It's one we are investing in the infrastructure that this country needs. We are building the roads. We are putting the broadband in. We are giving those assets to our people so that long-term they can grow. And that's a very... Um, a, a very much the economic model you see in successful countries. Like, where is the Chinese and that at the moment are building roads, building infrastructure? The Russians are building roads and infrastructure. The Indians are building roads and infrastructure. The European countries of Italy and Spain are talking about how do we manage our debt. They're not looking at the economic fundamentals they need to. And until the day that they measure themselves and look at those long-term interests they will not compete in the modern world and they will fall further down. But New Zealand has the ability to compete. As Shane said, we're starting, uh, we've got an agricultural economy that is poised to be in the right place at the right time. We're beside the major economic markets that this world will have for the next generation or so. We are close to them. We've never been close to them before. We made our money in the 50s, but we made it by being far away from those economic markets. Now they are close, so we have to take advantage of that. We also have to be able to look at the transfer of skills and the ability to be part of that neighbourhood. We can't look at ourselves in isolation. If you want to have an isolated New Zealand that doesn't grow, that doesn't achieve, well then you're going to hold your people back. And we can't afford to do that. New Zealanders need to be able to invest in things and get that technology so that they can grow and have the standard of living that they desire. And this government will deliver that through our plan because we will responsibly manage the government finance. We will build a stronger economy. We will look at the delivery of public services and also we will rebuild Christchurch so that it is an in integral part of the New Zealand plan. And that is a long-term focus something most Western economies don't realise and don't accept at the moment. And that is what is needed for this country to grow. It is the success of us going forward, and with good leadership, we will achieve that. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I call